Hi everyone, welcome back. So it looks like content production is like once a month thing, but it's actually not. It's not that I'm too busy with work or anything. Of course, I have a lot of work to do. However, there's something else that's stopping me from producing content and it's a very dangerous thing. I won't tell you what it is now, but do subscribe to my channel and you get to know it soon. Now, back to this. This is the Astro Z690 PG Riptide motherboard for the Intel 12th generation processor. This board retails at just about RM1000 and it works well even with my Intel Core i9 12900K. Yes, mine. I bought it. So this 12900K with me, I've managed to overclock to 5.2 GHz on this board and it did not fail. So this is the good stuff about this board, RM1000-ish. So it will work great for Core i5K models and Core i7K models. And if you are like me wanting to push the Core i9, yes, it will do it as well. So without further ado, let's dive into the details of this board. The Z690 PG Riptide comes with 13-phase 55M VRM and two heat sinks covering both sides of the VRM layout. Not the most beefy of heat sinks, but they are plenty sufficient for most people. More about this one later. I like that the PG Riptide here comes with ample fan connectors and there's also multiple ARGB connectors. The board itself has RGB only on the heat sink at the bottom area, which is a nice touch, especially if you are someone who does not want RGB LED. At the rear, it comes with one HDMI output and sufficient USB connectivity. No built-in I.O. panel, but what I like about this board is that it comes with BIOS flashback functionality. The Z690 PG Riptide comes with three M.2 sockets for storage and one for Wi-Fi. The Hyper sockets supports up to Gen 4x4 drives, while the Ultra sockets supports Gen 3x4 and SATA 3 drives. Lastly, the board comes with a graphics card holder, which is a plus point. Now back to the VRM, this being a Z690 board, I tested it with an Intel Core i9 12900K and managed to overclock it to 5.2 GHz and the VRM cooling worked just fine even in open bench environment with thermal readings going to about 70 degrees Celsius range and should run a little cooler in a case setup with fans generating airflow around it. If you're running an Intel processor like the 12900K, you should be worrying about the CPU cooling before you even have to worry about the VRM. So yeah, based on what I've shared to you, I guess you know my verdict. This is a great board at this price point for Intel Core i5 and i7 processors overclocking. For i9, it's on the high side but it actually still works. So I'd say it's okay with it as well. However, if you are feeling uncomfortable with the higher temperatures on the VRM heatsink, there are higher end models from Astro that's uh, available for you for your Intel Core i9 processor overclocking. That's all from me for this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful and informative. If you like more of this kind of content, do check out the videos at the side and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.